Well, hello there. My name is Mark Risen Hopkins. Welcome to Cube Conversations. We're broadcasting live out here in uh, Dallas, Texas today, and I'm here with uh, Andrew Talbert from uh, Prodea. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some Internet of Things today. It's going to be a really interesting conversation, so I hope you stick with us. Uh, I wanted to uh, talk about a lot of things. Uh, you have an interesting company, a lot of interesting kind of history involved in the company, but uh, I want to talk about your, your main product you, you use. Uh, it's, we talked broadly about Internet of Things, we talked a little mm -hmm. bit before. So, but give me kind of like the, the elevator pitch when you try to describe what it is, where you guys sit in this space. What is, what is it that your company does? Uh, what thank is the product? You. Well, thank you. Uh, first, thanks for having me mm -hmm. and uh, happy to do that. Uh, so what we've developed is a, is a really a platform approach to the Internet of Things. Okay. Uh, making this Internet of Things and this connected life a reality today. We recognize it's complex. There's a lot of uh, different offerings out there and devices out there and a lot of complexity for the consumer. So what we did as a company is we took a step back. We said, let's, let's take more of a platform approach to the first, the connected home, and to the different devices that consumers want to interact with, uh, and, then, and then expand that as well to the Internet of Things. The net result is a, is a very simple way for consumers to start to adopt anything from home automation and, and uh, e-health and, uh, and enhanced communications to just the way they interact with media uh, and different types of services across their TV, their iPad, their, their phone, and, mm. and what have you. Okay, I'm I'm a consumer. I'm a guy. I'm a guy that wants to have you know, Nest and ha you know in my house and control my weather and the lights go on and, and when I come home. What, what does that mean? Where does your product help me get to, get where Where does that get to A to B there? So uh, what we what we recognize and you you even uh, identified a few examples is there's many point solutions out there. There's mm -hmm. many devices that you can go out there and, and purchase. Nest being being one of them. Um, but that leads to a lot of complexity for the end consumer. Sure. Uh, complexity in terms of there tends to be a, a, a device and maybe an, an application for each individual Just vertical. Dozens of systems to right. manage. Right. Yeah. Um, and so each one is its own device, each one is its own learning curve, each one is its own separate service and experience. Mm -hmm. um, so the approach we took is first off recognize that uh, somebody needs to bring this capability into the home um, and we choose service providers. Um, now service providers for us, is a, they have different uh, um, uh, terminology for what a service provider is. Traditional folks like telecom companies, cable companies, satellite companies, as well as alternative company, alternative service providers, which are everything from home builders to retailers and mm -hmm. over-the-top content companies. And so what we did is we built a platform that enables both of those types of companies to approach you as a consumer not with yet another device or not with yet another service vertical like energy management or healthcare, but rather with a bouquet of services that allow you to say, listen, from our, our bouquet of services, would you like to control your thermostat or, or, or be notified when your kid comes home from school and, and remotely instruct them or be reminded that uh, it's time to exercise or your doctor wants to see you, but approach the home with a set of services and capabilities instead of just the technology. Mm -hmm. And what Protea built is the platform that enables them to do just that. So we've built the, uh, the technology to, to simplify that experience for you and to enable service providers to then deliver those services to you. Okay, so would your, so you kind of sits at the kind of integrating all these systems, not necessarily trying to be the brains or the sensor, but just a, a way to, a presentation layer. Yeah, yeah, well, yes and no. Okay. Uh, um, so presentation layer is very important. That's mm -hmm. the first thing the consumer sees. So absolutely, uh, whether it be f through a, a portal on an iPad okay. or through my web browser or through my TV, I will have the ability to, uh, to control these different services in my home. Uh, as it relates to the devices that proliferate in our home, yes, we, we don't want to have to tell the consumer that you must buy this one sensor or this one thermostat. Um, we want to be able to allow the consumer to engage on, on multiple different types of devices. Now, where we also add value, though, is really the integration of those things. Okay. Um, the, the enablement so that I can, from one portal, do, do something such as you know start a movie, but while I'm uh, engaging on entertainment there, also have that dim the lights. That requires some coordination behind the scenes, that uh, some complexity we don't put on the consumer's shoulders, but we take care of to enable those use cases. All right, so we were talking about this particular use case uh, just before we rolled cameras. I got, I got the, the Philips Hue system uh, as a review unit, and I, I found it to be an extraordinary kind of experience to have you know different color lights and have it be on a schedule, and you know, my lights blink if I get tagged on Facebook and kind of fun stuff like that. But uh, the setup process and kind of the maintenance of it and uh, some of the scheduling aspects were just kind of 
uh, well, I, I'm the only one in my family that would have been a, had the patience for it, mm -hmm. let alone the know-how. Um, my, my kids certainly wouldn't have been able to, well, maybe they would. They're kind of smart. But the, I don't know if they would have had the patience to sit there and kind of figure out how to hack it and get it to work. It was what it felt like was hacking. Mm -hmm. So how is, uh, obviously, you know, being an integrator, your, your job is to simplify that. So what are the challenges like? What, is, what does that process look like if I want to set up like geofencing and, and all these, you know, these geeky terms. How do you present that in an understandable way to the, to the end consumer? No, that's a very fair question. And, and I think there's, there's multiple challenges actually in that scenario we need to solve. The first one is exactly as you said, is that setup and the, and, and the maintenance. Maintenance is a very important piece, which is not just how do I get it into my home, but who manages it and supports this after that. And this is why we built the technology that enables providers to sell this as a service. Mm -hmm. So uh, part of our technology is to be the brains behind the setup. So as I take a device out of the box, I don't have to configure it. The, the, our platform configures it no for way. them. Um, and, and all I simply have to do is push a button on that device and push a button on, on the, main, the, the main unit for my home. But another part of that is at some point I'm going to have a problem. At some point I'm going to have a question. And you know, today, typically calling the device manufacturer is, is not a service experience. Mm -hmm. uh, but if it's brought into your home or it's part of your home because it is a service, you subscribe to a service and you can call that provider, we have enabled that use case by giving the providers the tools that they can reach into the home, they mm -hmm. can configure things for you, they can debug things for you, they, they can diagnose them. Not too different than your phone service or your TV service or your, your internet services today. Uh, a, big, uh, a big component of what we provide to them is the ability that they can then go support this as a service. Uh, the other element I might, might add though as well is it doesn't just end, start and end with that one light system or that security system or what have you. You as a consumer are going to adopt many of these things and, and what we see is the, the, the true vision of the internet of things is all of these different types of verticals working in concert with each other. Right, and, and you guys, we actually went to your, your uh, facility to kind of get a, a picture of what that would look like and that, that is truly the most interesting thing about when you start to have uh, a, a accrual of, of many different sensors and devices, like what, what the interplay can look like. So why don't you kind of walk through uh, that, that example that we Exactly. Saw. I think some of the examples that we showed were uh, one I referenced earlier of I'm enjoying some entertainment. I watch, I order a movie when I'm not even at my home. Mm. It queues up in my home. I sit down to watch it, the lights dim, the phones forward to voicemail. I even get a, a notification of TV saying, would you like a, a pizza, pizza with that? And then my phones actually call them. Well, that one scenario, just by itself, involves many different verticals. And, and even if I were to fill my life with devices and gadgets to do those different things, they're not talking to each other. Mm -hmm. And this is our approach to the home, what we like to uh, describe the home as today, it's, it's very much vertically sliced. Uh, I can buy a, a solution around a thermostat for energy management, a completely separate one around a camera for security and a completely separate one around entertainment. Um, and those are vertical slices to the home. And what we decided to do is spend many number of years architecting a horizontal platform mm -hmm. and, and one that could engage across multiple verticals to not just give the consumer the ability to interact with those things, but to enable these scenes where that, that one we described is entertainment working with uh, home automation, working with voice, working with advertisement and promotion. That it becomes very easy if they're riding on the same platform, very difficult if you vertically slice the home. Uh, one of the things we also saw when we, we, we toured your, your offices uh, last week was the, the, the amazing number of patents you guys have. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, patents is kind of a touchy subject in, in general in politics, but it's, it's interesting to see, uh, it's kind of a, I see it as a great benchmark of, of what level of innovation you're doing, not necessarily uh, from a business perspective, how how important is the the patents to as a, is it a point of pride or is it actually kind of a a, a business driver for your organization? I mean, th there's many reasons you get you get patents mm -hmm. or file for patents. Um, we don't we don't you have them for offensive reasons. Sure, uh, it's it's more to protect what we've done and what we've done is spent a number of years architecting the approach to the connected home. Mm -hmm. So the patents aren't really about use cases. They're not really about the fact that I that, that scenario of, of starting sure. a film and, and the lights dimming. But it's rather that 
the home or the, can, the this Internet of Things needs a platform that can do these things and, and how we architect that platform between the technology we do at the consumers on the consumer side and the technology we do in the cloud and then architecting that end-to-end -end approach to the space. And it's also a recognition of the amount of time and, and engineering uh, effort we've applied towards first creating the platform, which mm -hmm. we did uh, almost eight years, no, years, years ago now, um, and then going and taking that platform to market. The patents really are around that architecture for that platform. So we do think it's fundamentally important because if you don't have the right platform for this internet of things, you're not going to scale with sure. it. Uh, and the patents are really just our ways to protect that. So, um, with regard to the platform and, and me being uh, the, the, the kind of the, the geeky, get down and dirty, Raspberry Pi kind of guy, so what is your approach? I mean, you say you're dealing with service providers, but what is your approach to people like me? Um, we're probably a, a small, but like kind of an early adopter crowd uh, that in your market, in your end consumer market. So uh, what sort of tools do you guys make available to folks that want to, that are not necessarily mm -hmm. a large uh, service provider, but a, or, a, or a large device maker, but just kind of want to hook into what you've built? Uh, so, what we've, first off, you know, Protea is a white label company. Sure. Uh, we're a B2B company. Mm -hmm. uh, so, at the end of the day, we, we, we made that decision not to sell directly to the end consumer. Right. And so, the decision as to who we, uh, who we sell through is, is, is or, an, and how that is perceived position to the end consumer is mm -hmm. one of our customers. Now, that said, we recognize very early on as well that Protea is not the, as the creator of the platform, we're not necessarily the only ones creating apps and services on it. So we've created an open application framework. Okay. Uh, we give it to our customers and our partners, who then they decide how far they want to open the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. um, many of them have visions of creating uh, development communi developer communities that uh, that can really uh, take it and, and run with it. Um, and others have, have more uh, controlled uh, environments because they're running mission critical services like healthcare on it. But either way, we've created the platform to be open, right. um, and then they can then open up the community as far as they, as far as, and as wide as they want That's to. That's important, right? You know, any, any major platform company that doesn't have a development, or at least hooks for a development community, is exactly. at and, a limited and lifespan, right? Exactly, and, and, and what I think our customers recognize, though, is that, um, and one, one problem that I think we're solving that we see in this Internet of Things space is, is in Internet of Things, you see a lot of visions for this future. Mm -hmm. uh, this future capability where everything's talking in concert. Um, however, there's not a lot of clarity of how I get there. Um, how do I go from a home that I live in today and the services that I consume today to, to this future vision? And so our approach with all, all of our customers has been one of don't try to sell the connected home in all of its glory today. Mm -hmm. uh, it's difficult. If you can, there's a few early adopters that will take it, uh, but the mass market isn't necessarily ready for it. Rather, sell what's meaningful th to them. Uh, simple use cases like I want to be notified when my daughter comes home from school, mm -hmm. get a message on my phone, uh, what's, what have you, um, and then you know, log into the home and, and instruct her to do her homework. That's a simple use case that I can solve in one of two ways. One way would be I put a product in there that just does that, mm -hmm. and another way I, I give them a product that does that but then also expands to something else. And so this is our approach, which is to engage our, with our customers so that they get into the home with something that makes sense and is kind of bite-sized to the consumer today, but now you're in there with a platform that you can continue to evolve to more and more sophisticated services. I think uh, another interesting, and this is what really kind of started me down the road uh, that I was in, is, is the kind of the economic incentive approach, right? You know, mm -hmm. the, the Nest, I, I've mentioned it before, it, it's actually saved me money, right? It's paid for itself, and there are certain things that you can do with smart home technology, internet yes. of things technology that will that's an interesting hook uh, to, to use as a sales method. Um, I think it works. I mean, you see companies doing it with solar now too, right? Yep. You know, you, you, if you can make the case this is going to save you money, you can do something that's ultimately beneficial and kind of cool at the same time, mm -hmm. as, as opposed to dropping a bunch of cash on <laughs> something that's just going to look cool, but Absolutely. maybe not, maybe not going to. Right. And, and and that is fundamental to our approach. With mm -hmm. if you to our to our customers, if you engage the consumer with a platform that has many different values. Mm -hmm. One value is something like save money, but another value is to enable them to transact in a new way that generates revenue. By doing that, it, it helps justify the business case because one challenge that many providers have in this space is that there's just so many different point solutions that consumers are willing to buy right. uh, and spend money on. However, if you get in there and with the same cost as getting in there in there under a uh, energy management uh, proposition, the cost is the the platform's now paid for and I can very easily turn up a new entertainment proposition or, or mm -hmm. vertical. Now all of a sudden it's a lot Sunk easier. Sunk cost, yeah. 
Correct. So you mentioned healthcare, uh, I, and we've been talking a lot about the smart home. Uh, so uh, what are some of the kind of the, the I guess, commercial smart house or smart uh, systems uh, solutions that you guys are, are, are working with? We see healthcare as really just an extension of that Internet of Things, whereas sure. in, in one context it might be about turning lights on and off or, or security, and that's, those are just devices that I'm interacting with or other parties are interacting with. When you extend that to healthcare, What's, what's different now is the devices. Instead of a light or, a, or, or an appliance, it's now my weight scale. Or if I happen to be a diabetic, it might be a, a glucometer mm. or uh, uh, it might be a blood pressure cuff or what have you for a, uh, somebody with a, a heart condition. Um, those are the devices. And now the, the partners that we're engaged with on those, instead of being a content company or a security monitoring company, is a healthcare provider okay. uh, or, a, uh, or a, a, a weight loss program. Um, by bringing these worlds together, uh, the devices that I interact with, those being healthcare and wellness devices, with different types of parties who then will deliver services to them over a common user experience, my TV, my PC, my mobile. We create business cases where people can subscribe to health and wellness services or uh, doctors and hospitals can actually use it as a way to monitor patients after they leave the hospital. Those business cases become very available uh, and very realizable because the, we've taken care of that technology and, and drawn that bridge between those two worlds. So, Christian Nicole had, had a question that wanted me to ask you specifically, uh, and so I, I'm going to uh, throw that in now. You guys have been working on this, and it came, kind of came to fruition after many years mm -hmm. of, of research and development. So, um, she wants, and this is not your first major success, first major product. So, she wants to know if you guys have been working on this for, you know, uh, I think she said close to a decade. Is that correct? Eight years. Eight years. Eight years? Yeah. yeah. So what's in the pipe for the next decade? <laughs> uh, <laughs> at the moment, the Internet of Things offers, I think, enough promise to keep us quite busy for sure. quite a while. Um, and, and not only just because we spent a lot of time um, building a very powerful platform, but because I think consumer adoption is really uh, is getting to the point where people are ready to start going from individual gadgets and point solutions to really embrace the Internet of Things. So. For us, the foreseeable future is really the extension of this beyond the home. Mm -hmm. um, the in, if, if you look at the Internet of Things, it, it promises to be thing, uh, solutions well outside the home. But if you start with the home, I start connecting different devices and, and entities in my life. The connected school is a logical progression from the home. The connected hospital or, or healthcare is another logical progression. I get in my car and services start to carry with me with, to my car. So uh, for now, it's, uh, we, we have uh, plenty of opportunity just to continue to, to grow that connected life. Mm -hmm. We started in the home because it's a meaningful place to start and something real that we can sell to, through our customers today. But uh, the number of different domains that we see connecting this into is, is pretty limitless and, and I think will have us busy for, for quite some time to go. Right. Okay, cool. Well, I mean, I, I, I got a thousand more questions. We could probably talk for another couple of hours. We probably should wrap it up, though. It's been a, it's been a great conversation. Thank uh, you. Thank you for coming in. Thank you in. for your time. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll be right back. After, uh, well, actually, this is the, uh, the end of the show, so we'll see you uh, on the next Cube Conversations. Thanks for joining us.